it is our needle felted alpaca kit in natural colours, not necessarily undyed, but natural tones. We do also have a brights which has raspberry, orange and blue lagoon, which are really, really fun. This one is fawn, chocolate and natural grey. So in this kit, we've got our full instructions. We also have in the lid here, we've just got some needle felting tips. I highly recommend you read through those tips before you do any felting. Simple things like always hold the piece of work on your foam. Uh, if you attach parts with just a couple of stabs before felting firmly, you can ensure correct placement. And if you're not happy with something, you can always pull it off at that point. It, just little things like that. So what we've got here, we've got full instructions and so we've got what our kit contains we've got a size diagram uh, we're going to work to these sizes this is one to one and then we have full instructions and color photos to refer to throughout We have three colours, like I was saying, we've got the fawn, natural grey and the chocolate for our main colours. And then we also have our accent colours for doing the nose area, the eyes. And two 36 gauge triangle needle felting needles, these are your standard needles, and a small piece of felting foam. So today I will show you how to make the fawn alpaca, this one here, which is mainly fawn and then the ears and the nose are white. So I've got the fawn, natural white and the black, which is for the details of the eyes and the nose. So for the body, it says to make the body, take a little more than a third of your main colour wool top and roll into a short fat sausage. To figure out a third, just fold into three and pull off a third. This was my largest third. So I'm going to roll this up now. On my phone. So that at the moment if I hold it over the body a bit too big so we're just going to felt that and firm it up. Taking your needle and just start working all those ends in. So I've been working this for a few minutes and it's really starting to hold. When I refer to the diagram, it's fitting widthways but it's still a bit long. So to shorten up the body, what I'm going to do is stab at an angle. You can stab in at the end, which will shorten the body up, but it will also make this end very, very firm. And we need to not only move these fibres at the end, but the ones in the middle we want to pull in as well. So stabbing further in the body, but at an angle, will move all those fibres as well. Flip it round. much happier with that. At this point there's still some amount of give in the wall but you can't take it apart. It's holding its shape quite nicely. So next up is the legs. So to make the legs take a third of the remaining wool top colour. So not half of the remaining, a third. So again fold into your 
threes again and take off a half a, a third when you're holding your hands don't hold them close together because you won't be able to divide the fibers hold them quite far apart and those fibers will slide past each other going to divide this into four pieces lengthways so into two and then that one into two and then that one into two so we've got our four pieces what we'll do now is we're going to take one of the four pieces we're going to fold in half that way I want to shorten this up a little bit so just free stacking the fibers what I find helpful when folding in half is to hold it on my phone find my halfway point stab a line and I flip over give it a quick stab so those fibers are starting to tangle together and then show you on the picture here these fibres were going to roll in that direction. And then we're going to felt the folded half of the leg or end of the leg. So these ends we need to keep fluffy. These are what we're going to attach onto the body with. This end is going to be the foot and the leg. However far up you felt, that's how long your leg is going to be. So if you want a really long leg, felt all the way up to there. If you want a short leg, you just tidy up the base. You want to make sure your legs are nice and firm that's what's going to give your alpaca support while standing if you've got some wispy fibers right on the end you can just move your needle in a circular motion that's grabbed all the fibers and push it up inside size I'd say that's about right so I'm feeling where the firmness is in the leg and it's about at the line there so these ends are our fluffy ends I repeat for the other three legs so now I have my four legs and I would say these two are thinner than the other two. So I generally use my thinner legs for my front legs and my fatter ones for the back legs. So to attach the legs, I'll attach a front leg first. I'm going to open up these fibers. Take our body and sit the leg on there and we're going to take one side of the fibers over the body one way and the other around the other way now that that's holding i can work on getting all these fibers secured around and this is going to firm up the body piece even more because we're not just compressing those fibers that 
with the fluffy ends of the leg, we're actually still compressing the fibres that were in the body. There we go, that one's falling on. And take my next front leg, fluff these fibres up. What I'll do with this one is actually split it in half and then one of the halves I'll split again. Just so that I can wrap those fibres either side of the first leg we put on. And do put the legs quite close together. Alpacas are quite dainty, elegant little creatures. So I find putting the legs quite close together accentuates their elegance. There we go. And now I'll repeat for the back legs. So I've got those legs on securely. If you've got one that's slightly shorter than the others, you can just tug at it a bit and it will come out a little. If you've got one that's slightly longer than the others, you can either stab in at the foot end or even where it attaches to the body and it will help drag some of those fibres down into the body. And he still stands. Now for the head and neck, we work both at the same time. So the neck and the head are just one long piece. So take half of the remaining main collar And then we're going to, I will restack that a bit more. We're going to work this the same way we did with the legs. It's just going to be much thicker. Stab a line. And then roll it up. If you roll it quite tightly, it means you've got less work to do. size and to attach this one again we're going to split in half like we did the legs decide at this point which area you prefer for your face I think I'm going to go this side's going to be my face although it's got a little fold where I rolled the fibers that's actually going to be hidden with the eyes and the nose so that's going to leave the back of the head looking neat and tidy. Try to remember which ones you front and back of your body and you're going to sit your head and neck on top. Just how I said at the start, just a few little stabs just to start holding it onto the body. And then we're going to take that piece down the front, down the chest, and onto the belly. And then this bit, we're just going to let it go along the back.
and felt all of those ends in very firmly now. So we've got the head firmly attached and all those fibres have all been felted in. Now for the nose, that is in your contrast colour, so for this one it's white. The instructions say take a small amount, I know that can sound confusing, um, but it's very hard to say kind of a tuft. So it's going to slide a very small amount out. Remember with felting you can always add but you can't take away. And we're going to felt into a nose shape using the same sort of method as we did with the legs. Felt it on our mat before rolling. What can help to bulk the nose up without making it too long is just fold some of those fibres back again. So we want a short nose. quite stubby and chunky. So this is the snout as well. This is what forms more of that alpaca shape. And you're not felting far down on this at all. If I show you on here, it's literally possibly not even a centimetre down. And you really want to make sure your nose is felted very firmly because when attaching the black for the nose and mouth shape, if it's not firm, you're just going to lose that contrast colour within the nose. So, I'm going to attach the nose to the head now. And all these unfelted fluffy ends, that's going to create the face. So I generally take all these fluffy ends up. And that's going to sit about a centimetre down, not, not even a centimetre down the head. Lay it on. Give it a general stab just around the nose. I think I want that slightly further down. That's better. Now with these white ends, you're almost going to create a triangle. So bring these ones up from the nose. And then all this lot, you're going to felt into the area where the eyes are going to sit. You don't want to bring it down the back because otherwise you're going to end up with a white or contrast colour bit going down the back of the neck. This is literally just for the face. Then for the ears, we're going to take roughly the same amount as we did for the nose. It's barely anything really. And then we're going to fold or divide in two. 
then fold again as before. So one nose worth makes two ears. We're going to roll again like we did with the nose and legs and felt. Now instead of kind of rolling around and working it so it goes into a sausage shape, I'm just going to keep flipping it over because we want quite a flat shape for the ears. You can just work these edges in. Just check on the diagram. A bit of a chunky ear, but I'm quite happy with it. And repeat for the next one. So I've got my two ears now. So to attach these, we're just going to sit them. You can play with the position either side of the head. Again, these fluffy white ends we want to take into the face area. You can take some under the nose and then up into the face. So now we've got the ears on. And next we're going to do cheeks and then the little top knot or the fringe. So for the cheeks, taking a little tuft, small amount, split in half, and give it a little bit of a roll on your hands. This just starts to pre-felt it and form it into a shape we need. And I'm just going to hold it in position. I like to stab around the edges first. If you want your alpaca to look slightly chunkier, you can do bigger cheeks. And we're not going to over felt these now. So we want to keep them looking fluffy. Still make sure they're on securely, especially by stabbing in at the edges. But try to keep this middle bit very fluffed up and airy. One cheek. We do the same with the neck. So this is covering up those bits of white that you put on with the nose and the ears. Make sure they're looking even. with his face. 
then with the top knot again take a small amount rolling your hands I'm going to sit it right on top and there you go there's the head we'll do the face after I always like to do my face very very last because as soon as they've got a face they come alive and stabbing them whilst they've got a face doesn't seem very kind so for the tail I'm going to take about the same amount that we did for the nose um, we're going to work it similar to the nose again I won't do the extra fold this time though what I will just do is I'll roll and similar to the ears I'll make it flatter it doesn't matter too much about it being really really flat because it's still going to sit up against the body you need a bit of depth to it and just have little short tails And then with your fluffy ends, sit the tail on. Your fluffy ends are going to go across the back. As you attach more pieces to the body, it's going to secure all the other pieces on even more. So all those fibres that we attached the legs with that we brought up here are now covered by both the neck pieces and the tail. So we have a small amount of our main colour left. Um, what I'm going to do now is make sure all these pieces are on firmly but also you can almost see where the fibres from the tail have gone. Typically, alpaca's fleece will grow down as it's quite drapey. So I'm just going to take a small tuft and lay that over just so if if you can see the direction of the fibers, they're at least going in the correct direction, but it also holds the tail on even firmer and the legs and the neck. Now for the face. So first of all we'll do the eyes which are in black and it takes a tiny tiny amount. Just take a wisp of black and that's going to do probably two eyes. I'm going to snap these fibres in half, shorten them, make sure they're roughly the same size as each other. And rolling your hands just like your cheeks, and I think these are going to be too big even. slightly too big so maybe split that in half again again you can always add but you can't take away so make sure you start smaller that's a bit better and add a bit more to this one I know they look slightly mad at the moment, but we're going to felt these eyes on. We're going to make it into an oval shape. 
so I will felt at the front and then the back. And that's forcing it into an oval shape. And then start stabbing in the middle. All right. And what we're going to do next, two glints and then putting this little face on. So for your glints, you need even, even smaller pieces. You can probably hardly even see that tiny, tiny amount. I'm just going to snap a tiny amount off. Hold it over the eye and just needle that in. I like to put the glint slightly further up the top of the eye. This is where it's really important that you're working on a firm base. There's one glint. Again, I'm just going to snap some of those fibres off. Hold it over the eye again. Okay. Now for the nose, again, make sure you've got a nice firm base. We're going to do a Y shape first. So taking wispy bits, I basically just hold it over the nose. I'm going to let the needle do the work. So I'm going to go straight in the middle of the Y. And I'm going to divide these two. I'm just going to needle it in. The shape of the nose. And take those fibres down the base of the Y. Then we're going to do almost like a W shape for a little smile. I'm going to, just how I did at the top, I'm going to divide that in half. So I can take one, one side of the face and one the other. If you have some spare fibres, I mean this face isn't done quite yet, snap them off. You don't want to cut them off. You want to snap those fibres because it creates a more jagged edge on the base of the fibres, whereas if you cut them off it's too much of a clean cut. It won't felt in so easily. And just take your time. Obviously, if you really hate it, you can always cover it back over with some more white. There. 
is our little needle felted alpaca. So on to make the other two in your kit. Shameless plug, the kit is available from our website and you can also get it in the shop. I've still got small amounts left so you could always maybe do a fourth alpaca, multicoloured. But thank you so much for watching. Happy stabbing! Thank you.